welcome back my twisted few. Today's video is doing a tech marine which I've done for one of our awesome patrons as a way of saying thank you. This painting guide I'm going to be showing you how to paint a Warhammer 40k tech Primaris tech marine and I'm going to show you how to paint him the twisted dice way. And if you're new to the channel, thank you very much for coming to check us out. We really do appreciate it. And of course, if you like what you see, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. Uh, it really does mean a lot to us and it helps us out in so many ways. And of course, if you want to see more from ourselves at Twisted Dice, hit the bell and that's going to get updated you on all the cool content that's coming out from ourselves. But every Monday night, I'm going to be showing you how to do something cool with painting or even building some awesome train for your 40k battlefield. So this first part of the video, I primed the actual model itself in a black primer. So the colors we're gonna be doing with next for the airbrush, we're gonna be using Abaddon Black, the Fang, Fenrisian Gray, and also Rust Gray. So for this first part of the airbrushing, we're gonna go with a mixture of 50-50, the Fang with Abaddon Black. So the type of areas we want to look for is all the highlighted parts that the light would be reflecting upon on the actual model itself. So like for instance, the top part of the legs, the top part of the model itself, on the on the servo arms. Um, not that the servo arms are going to be black, but they're going to be silver. But anything that's raised, uh, we want to capture this first part of the airbrushing uh, using this mixture. So for this first part, when you're putting this layer on, you may look like it's not actually applying to the model. Uh, a tip that I can give you when applying this layer, once you've done a couple of, la couple of layers on it, just pull it out from underneath the light you're working upon and just put it in more of uh, the room natural light and you should start seeing those layers start to take an effect on the model. So for this next stage, I'm gonna be going with just the fang. Uh, and just a little tip when putting this through, because the fang is quite a, a thick pigment, I tend to go 50-50 with airbrush thinner to the actual fang itself, and it comes through the brush quite nicely. So for the final highlight, it's just going in with rust gray, and all I'm looking upon is just the, the finest, highest highlights on the actual model itself. So as you can see, you've got such a cool effect using the airbrush and using that color scheme. Um, it really does make those blacks really, really pop on the model. So for the next stage, we're gonna be going in with Fenrisian Gray and we're just gonna pick out all the edge highlights on the actual model itself. So for that final highlight, going in with 50-50 of Fenrisian Gray with a white uh, just for that highest highlight. So for this next stage, we want to start thinking about doing the axe, the red. So what we're going to do next, we're going to be using some Tamiya flat white. So when doing the highlighting, I like to tend to go more of a watered down version of the Tamiya white, but of course using the Tamiya thinner. Uh, what I will do, because we're going straight over to black, I'll give the model first of all a coat of the white to turn it a slight grey and then start building up the areas I would like to be the Zenith highlight. Now, because we want the red to be a nice rich red, we're gonna be going in with a Mephiston red from Games Workshop. Now with this, I'm just gonna thin this down with 50-50 airbrush thinner to Mephiston Red. But what I'm also gonna do to make that red pop and make it look so friggin' nice on the model itself, I'm just gonna add a little drop of red ink from Scale Color. Now when doing this stage, all I would do with the Mephiston Red is just pick out the highest highlight on the actual model itself. Because um, what we want to do is we want to go a little bit later on with a darker red just to start pulling out those shadow areas. But adding that ink to it, boy, that's going to make any of your color schemes that you choose really make them pop. So 
So for this next stage to get that nice awesome red, I use a lovely beautiful red from Vallejo. Um, now this is one of their model air colors, so it's designed for the airbrush. However, I still will add thinner to the airbrush before putting this paint into the actual airbrush itself. And the when this red comes out, you get such an awesome crisp red. And I've used this color so many times on so many of my models. So it's such an awesome red. But I say, check the description out. All the details will be in there. And I'll list all the paints that I've used in today's video. So the next color I'm gonna use is a metal color from Vallejo. And this is gun metal gray. This paint is designed for an airbrush. It really goes for an airbrush quite nicely, quite smoothly, but it is such an awesome paint. It really works very, very well just using it off the actual paintbrush itself. And you tend to find that if you do this over a black paint, you will get a much better, nicer, sharper effect from it. So now we really want to start thinking about the whites and we want to make those whites look friggin' awesome on this model. We want to make them pop. So because we've got some reds, we've got blacks, we've got quite a few various different colors on the model already. We're going to use the fang because it's a base color and the pigments are quite thick. We're going to use the fang to pick out anything that's going to be white and that's going to be our first color we're going to put down. Uh, and this will help block out the, the reds and the blacks and it will give a nice effect ready for what we do next. Okay, let's have some fun. So let's start thinking about making that white pop. Uh, we've already painted everything the fang. Now we're gonna go in with a drop of Fenris in gray. Uh, so with the Fenris in gray, I'm just gonna water this down with water and apply this over, over the fang itself. So this is where we're gonna see the white start to come to life. So with a little drop of dead white from Vallejo, and this is their color, their game range, all I'm gonna do is now start mixing that into the Fenrisian gray. Now for this next stage, what we wanna start doing is start building up the mixture of the Fenrisian gray with the dead white. And we wanna start pulling this up to the highlighted areas. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave some of the Fenrisian gray in the actual shadow areas. So the Fenrisian gray will actually give a really nice effect for the darker areas, but the dead white mixed in with the Fenrisian gray is gonna give a real nice highlighted area and it's gonna make it pop. Okay, so now we're gonna go in for the kill. We're gonna start adding in the dead white over to the areas. As you can see, I've now applied the shoulder pads and stuck them onto the actual model itself. This will allow me, allow me and help me see where I want the highlighted raised areas to be on the actual shoulder pads. Good little tip, as you can see, I've got a damp, I've got a spare paintbrush to the side of me. Now this is just a damp paintbrush. So once I apply the dead white on to help that, that blend in between the two colors, all I would do is apply the damp, 
damp paint brush, brush and just smooth the colors together and that helps that transition pull together um, and it gives a much smoother, nicer blend. So next up we're going to go with the eyes. Now depending on how much detail you want to go with the eyes. Um, the colour scheme that I'm going to go with this, because we've got a red and black model, we're going to go with blues. So we're going to start off with a nice rich blue from Vallejo, this is French blue. Then we're going to move over to Tesla blue. Then moving over to, I can't remember what this one was called, um, Templar Guard blue and then finishing off with the Balmuth blue. Now the Balmuth blue they no long games workshop no longer use this so if you're in the situation if you've got that great if not just add a little bit of white into the previous mix uh, and that'll just help bring out that final highlight so to start giving this character some more color some more some more interest into the parts that are already painted into gunmetal gray we're going to start adding in some copper paint into just various different little random parts on the actual model itself what this will do this will help break up the actual model itself so whoever's looking upon it um, with iron warriors iron hands um, they tend to be a dark dull color so to add those copper parts in it will just help break up the metal parts and it will just help make that model stand out more upon the battlefield so something well worth thinking about that if you're going to do a model that's just basically um, lead belcher or something that's primarily gray gray or gray silver think about adding some other colors in there just to make that model more rich and give it some more interesting features for it to look upon So now thinking about the highlight for the all the red parts on the model itself, I'm going to be going in with Troll Slayer Orange. Now it's quite a strong uh, orange, but it really does, if you apply this correctly and thinly, you can give, get a really nice edge highlighting effect just using this color. So for me, decals make the model and they really do help your model pop. So first off, I coated this model in gloss varnish. The second thing, I had to make a custom decal. Uh, believe it or not, I don't own any Iron Hands or Iron, Iron Hands uh, decals. So I've had to make and customize my own one. So two things we're gonna use on this one is Microset Soul 1 and Microset Soul 2. The first thing you wanna apply is Microsoft Set 1, first of all, on the area that you want the actual decal to sit upon. Once you've got the decal set into place, I normally just let it dry for a couple of seconds and just dab a cotton bud over just to take off some of the excess fluid. So once Microset Soul 1 is dried, I will then go over with Microset Soul 2. Uh, what this does, this actually starts dissolving the lacquer which is on the decal paper uh, and this will help make the, the transfer look more like it's been painted on the actual model itself. With this, you normally need to give it about four to five hours to let it dissolve the actual lacquer itself. Uh, I normally give it about four hours and then give it another coat just to make sure you get the perfect transfer. So 12 hours later, I've 
gone to bed uh, and as you can see the microsolve is set quite nicely on the actual model itself and the um the lacquer's kind of disappeared and it kind of gives that really nice sharp decal type look so it looks like it's more painted on the actual model itself so the next up what we're going to do is we're going to give this model another coat of gloss varnish so the next step is really once this is the parts done we're going to now start adding the gloss on so we can start adding all the oil cool oil effects so for this stage i'm just going to use salsador which is a kind of like white spirit but it just doesn't have the stink and the smell of it and using a burn umber oil from windsor and newton and what i will do is just mix these two together and to it gets like a milky consistency Now the reason why we have to gloss the model for this next part with the model gloss with the oil wash as soon as you just tap it onto the model the oil will actually just stick to the recesses and it's really good for pin washing uh, it's such an easy clean way of of doing this part the only downside with any oil washes it just takes a little bit longer to dry than normal normal washes and sometimes it can smell Once the South Store new oil has dried, just using a cotton bud with a little bit more South Store on the actual cotton bud itself, um, you can actually just then clean up all the overspill or all the areas basically where the oil is gone that you don't want it to be. Uh, with the cotton bud, you can just clean that part up. Now with normal acrylic washes, you can't do this. So when you do go down that route, you make a mistake. It's kind of then you have to then go back over the paints to correct it. But with the oils, this allows you to go back in and just re manipulate where the actual oil sit upon the model. So there are benefits to this, but as I said, it does stink. So next up, I'm only going to do some slight weathering damage effects on the actual model itself being a tech marine i'd expect him to be quite pristine in his actual arm itself so using some orange oils and using again burnt umber all i'm going to do is just going to have to take a little dot and then just pop that onto the actual model and then using salsador so for the next stage um i've covered the model back in with matte varnish uh, and this is just basically take the gloss down once the matte varnish has gone on this will still again give an extra layer of protection on the actual decal but more importantly it'll actually help sealing the oils on the model as well now for the base i really wanted something that's going to help pop the armor and all the cool stuff that we've actually done on the model itself so keeping it natural just using some just normal beach sand uh, a couple of little loose stones um, I can't remember exactly what stones they were. I think they were like uh, broken slate uh, and then a, just a little uh, Games Workshop uh, tough on there as well. Now, just to give it that final weather effect, so it looked like the dust is just flicking up on the actual model itself, using some flat earth from Tamiya. Again, use really thinning this down, just putting a very, very gentle overspray of the flat earth onto the base of the actual model itself but more importantly just onto the actual bottom part of the actual legs depending on how much of this you want to do is totally up to yourself and you may even find that you don't even want to do this but i find doing this just gives that little bit extra onto the actual character itself and that's it the tech marine's done so hopefully steve is going to enjoy this as i said at the beginning of this video this was a model that was chosen by one of our patrons and this is done free of charge um, as a way of saying thank you from Twisted Dice back to Steve for all the support he's given us over at Twisted Dice. Anyway, thank you very much everyone that's watched this video. If you got to this point, thank you very much. Drop a comment down below, let us know what you think. Um, but again, if you're working on anything, you wanna share all your cool stuff, 
come follow us on Facebook. Uh, it'd be really awesome just to you know join the group and share the, all your artwork. Anyway, hopefully I'll catch you again next Monday for another painting guide, tips, tricks. Or better still, if you fancy some battle reports or tactical videos, make sure you're following us at Twisted Dice because we've got you covered.